Welcome, folks. John Morgan here, celebrating the 4th on the 5th. There are two sides to every single story. The passion and the glory Just trying to make it through the day You know we're trying to come together Arm and arm and hand in hand And with my brother I will fight To unify our land America Home of the brave We stand strong When we're willing to change I will watch the feet of freedom And bow down on my knees Praying for a healing Fighting for the freedom Of my brother and me And on the other hand There are those who would undo us Unruly who would rule us And break us all apart And I will stand beside you Fight against injustice And lawless ones among us Come on, let freedom ring America Home of the brave We stand strong When we're willing to change And I will watch the feet of freedom And bow down Your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry Keep your bus Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry Keep your bus Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry John Morgan George W. Bush I tell you what, when, you, when you're watching John you swear you've been to a White House press conference. <laughs> and just seeing him up here makes me think of that billboard that says, Do you miss me yet? <laughs> John has a delightful book, and it was a joy to be able to write the forward for it. I have uh, been with him in many places across the country. Uh, I, I've watched him walk into a room and people will just fall silent because until they realize that he's the impersonator and it's only after he tells them that they're just in awe the President of the United States has come to speak to us well, I'm the free world leader Freedom's rolling out to you Oh, let's roll Well, I'm the good news instigator Compassionate conversator This freedom is rocking and rolling on out to you Red and blue well, Greetifications, folks. Welcome to the John Morgan Show. I'm your host, John Morgan. And it is such an honor to be with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I hope you guys all had an absolutely fantastic 4th of July. I did. It was wonderful. Um, 
some friends arranged a block party on the block that I live in here in Orlando, Florida. And uh, it was just great. There was a parade of all the little children that walked. In fact, we've been doing that for eons of time, uh, having a, a, a little bike parade for the kids, fireworks, um, all kinds of food, uh, the food, and uh, games. I mean, it was just outstanding. It was like an old, it was like a Norman Rockwell picnic, just exactly what you would expect from people that know each other or just barely know each other, you know. There, there were folks that came around that I, that I had not met yet, folks that came around that, had, um, that, that I happened to know are very different from me, but it didn't matter. All those differences were set aside, and we all just enjoyed this awesome melting pot called the United States of America. It is an absolutely fabulous country because it is based on equality. It's based on everyone coming together to, to celebrate our faith in God, our love for one another, our mutual service of one another, uh, people looking out for each other, helping each other up on a great entrepreneurial spirit. If you have great ideas, you can become a millionaire. You can even become a billionaire in America because it's a land that rewards hard work. It's a, a land that rewards effort. And it's, a, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place, America. I love it. I love it. You know, I remember when I was younger, and I've shared this with you before, I, I didn't like the word service. I, I didn't want to be a servant. I wanted to be someone who had servants, <laughs> which is terrible. But I was selfish. I was very greedy, selfish, myopic. Um, I didn't care about other people. But as I became a believer, I began to slowly painstakingly slowly, learn to search for the good of others, to seek the benefit that I could be to others. And that's what the Bible calls us to do as believers, to lay our lives down one for another. In the Gospel of John, Jesus, during the Last Supper, just hours before he was crucified, told his disciples, a new commandment I have for you, love one another as I have loved you. And then he demonstrated that love when he washed their feet, and then he demonstrated it again when he washed the earth with his own blood as he was uh, crucified on the cross. Uh, the Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels, and he did not. He suffered that whip, that uh, crucifixion. And why did he do that? He, he, he came as a ransom. You and I were without hope, without God in this world. Let me see if I can find a particular passage in the book of Ephesians. Let's see here. Got my trusty version Bible app open. You can just get to a, a book pretty quickly. Ephesians, there you go, chapter 2. Okay. <clears throat> Once... You were dead. Isn't that special? <laughs> Wait a minute. I, th I thought I was born alive. It's, yes. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. That's right. Sin leads to death. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. <sighs> you know, when we think we're living for ourselves... I, I'll give you a clue. There's an invisible tempter, a teaser, a malicious, malevolent dictator telling you what to do and telling you it's you making your own mind up. Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Isn't that interesting? All of us used to live that way. We're no better than anybody else. We're all the same, following the passionate desires and inclinations of the sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else, but God. 
two of the most beautiful words in all of Scripture. The hinge pin of everything. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. What? Yeah. You are united with Christ Jesus. He lives for real in you. Not a metaphor, not a nice fancy saying, not just a thought, theory, or anything else. It's reality. If you've given your life to Christ and he lives in you, then you are united with him. Glory to God. So God can point to us all in the future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed And you can't take credit from this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. That's you, folks. God's masterpiece. Isn't that beautiful? He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so precious. That's so priceless. And that applies to every believer. Every believer is royalty. Every believer is a son or daughter of Christ. You know, we've said it before, the things that connect us are so much greater than the things that separate us. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. That that would be me. I'm a non-Jew. That would make me a Gentile. I was called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship along among the people of Israel and you did not know the covenant promises God had made for them you lived in this world without God and without hope but now there's another one of those buts but now you have been united with Christ Jesus once you were far away from God but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ for Christ himself brought peace to us He united Jews and Gentiles into one body when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, out of the two he made one new man. One beautiful race of people. The human race. It's it's a gorgeous, wonderful kaleidoscope of color, a a beautiful drink of diversity, all these different people united by that blood that flows through all of our veins, the blood of Christ. And there is perfect, perfect unity between us because part of me is now in you and part of you is now in me. We are one people brought together through the blood of Christ, the bride of Christ. So on a lesser scale, as a beautiful country, e pluribus unum, out of the, and it's based on the same principle, that out of many nations comes one people. People from every other nation can come here you know, I, I can go to Germany, but I can't become a German. But my, my grandparents brought my parents here, my mom, and they became Americans. 
people from all over the world, all different ethnic backgrounds, people who look all different shades of color, become one people. Americans. Americans. You can, you could, you know, we can call ourselves hyphen Americans if we want to. I'm a German American and a Welsh American, but I'm an American, a red, white, and blue blooded American. Hallelujah. And if you are an American citizen, you are too. Yes, we have awesome heritage, but we have unity here. And the things that unite us are greater than the things that divide us. And I celebrate that with you. God bless you. And God bless America. My name is Curtis Ferguson. For someone who has spent much time with the president, President George W. Bush, I must say I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm inspired by the presentation that my friend here just did. I was in the audience, I was in tears, both for joy, both for excitement. He is so authentic and, and the height, everything is so incredible. I thought I was literally there with President George W. Bush. I must say this was incredible, if you can. This guy is the real deal. This is the Coca-Cola you want to order right here. <laughs> if you can get him, I promise you, you will be blessed. His message is powerful. He's a patriot. He loves our president as I do. And I think you will not regret it at all. Well, I'm the free world leader. That's right. Freedom's rolling out to you. Let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator, compassionate conversator. This freedom is rocking and rolling on after you. Red and blue. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the John Morgan Show. I'm your host, John Morgan, and I want to recommend George W. Bush's brand new book. Out of many, one. It's a very heartfelt treatise on immigration. And it's got pictures of a bunch of different folks who emigrated to the United States, immigrated to the United States, tells their beautiful story. And the, the, the artistic pictures are there. So fantastic. Also, I want to invite you to help uh, my friend Dale Lee and his family. We'll, I'll be going up to his memorial service on Friday. But his family is uh, in need of resources to help pay for the funeral. If you want to help, go to givesendago.com front slash DLF. That's Dale Lee Fund, DLF. I'll see if I can put it in the description. Give, send, go, dot com. Oh, man. I got to hurry. There you go. I got it in there. I think I got it in there. There it is. Okay, good. All right. Well, God bless you guys. I